such an ugly, contentious week in Washington that it turned the House chaplain's morning prayer into what I saw as like a potential exorcism. Look at this. In your most holy name, I now cast out all spirits of darkness from this chamber, spirits not from you. May your spirit of wisdom and patience descend upon all so that any spirit of darkness might have no place in our midst. Gee, I wonder what he was talking about. He told us later, he said, look, you know, it's about this racism and what's going on. And how about all the people who are listening in there on the right side of the aisle when they have done nothing? You literally had to have your chaplain say he wanted to remove the darkness. You know what the scene should have looked like? Let's bring in D. Lemon. I was expecting more of a scene like this one. Get uh, based I know on what you're gonna do, I know what you're gonna do. <laughs> the power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! I was looking at that scene before it came up. The power! And then they finally get her down in the bed and they strap her down. Yeah, but things don't get much better after that. But no, look, that's when the peas come out of her mouth and everything. It's so ugly that the chaplain has to say a prayer to remove the spirits <laughs> of darkness from the house chamber. Uh, we need it. We need prayer to remove the spirit of darkness from the country right now because this is an ugly period. Um, and this has nothing to do with supporting or not supporting the president. What the president did was awful. What he said was awful. And there's no one to blame but him, especially with people chanting, you know, send her back. That's all because the president tweeted what he tweeted. Absolutely. Now, but, I mean, that chant, those people had that in their hearts without the president. He just brought it to the fore. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but look, I mean, I don't know if you got to hear Ron Brownstein, his piece in The Atlantic comes out tomorrow. He's making a play here because he thinks it's how he wins. Yeah. And I don't make a distinction. You know, Anthony Scaramucci will say, I don't think he's racist, but he's saying racist things he's got to stop. Mm. Fine. My feeling is this. You say racist things, you wind up owning uh, the philosophy of racism as well. But yeah. even if you didn't, I think you're worse because you're playing to advantage with something that you know is ugly and you don't even have the excuse of ignorance that got you there. Yeah. Listen, listen. You can say things that are racist sometimes and not be racist. And then you can be ignorant of them. You can say things that are homophobic sometimes. Doesn't mean that the whole of you is racist as a whole. But if you say it often enough, I think it defines you. So we have to stop saying, oh, I don't know what's in his heart. I don't know what's in your heart, Chris. Mm. I know the kind of person you are. I know what your actions are. I know what your words are. And so from that, I can only surmise the kind of person you are and who you are. And so if you walk and talk and act like a racist, the prop, then chances are you're a racist. This president has said a whole lot of things that are racist. He's done a whole lot of things that are racist. And then he pretends he didn't say it. He pretended that he tried to stop the people from saying what they said in that crowd uh, yesterday or the day before, or the night before. The latest layer on the lasagna of lies.